Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! A mother's raw anguish in a Hennepin County courtroom at the sentencing hearing of Cedric Berry and Barry Davis for the murder of Monique Baugh. <laughs> she should be here! <laughs> Monique's mom, Wanda Williams Baugh, gave an absolutely heart wrenching victim impact statement. Her daughter was 28 and had two young daughters of her own. My daughter came face to face with pure evil that New Year's Eve. Prosecutors argued at Davis and Barry's trial that the men were trying to get to Monique's boyfriend, who had a beef with the drug dealer on New Year's Eve 2019. So Davis and Barry and some associates staged a phony house showing so they could kidnap Monique, who was a real estate agent. After using her to find the boyfriend, they brought Monique to a North Minneapolis alley in a U-Haul truck, executed her, and dumped her body. Monique did not have to die. I didn't have to throw her out like she was garbage either. My baby was so precious, so precious to me, to all of us. And I'm asking you, Your Honor, to please use your power to make sure they spend the rest of their miserable, insignificant lives in prison. This is the story of Monique Baugh, a life full of promise, love, and dreams. Monique Baugh was a vibrant soul who touched the lives of those around her. A realtor by profession, she was more than her job title. She was a mother, a daughter, a friend, a beacon of light to all who knew her. Monique Ball was in a relationship with John Mitchell Momo, who was also the father of her kids. Their lives intersected tragically when Monique was abducted and killed in a meticulously planned attack. But who would want this young mother dead and why? Welcome to Crime Corner. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Minneapolis, Minnesota, a city of highs and lows. Here, in the city's life, we meet Monique Ball whose radiant life was cut short in December 2019. At just 28 years old, Monique Ball was a real estate agent in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Not only was she committed to her job, but she also loved being a mother to her two little girls. Monique was known for her lively spirit and kind heart, and she had a special way of changing the lives of everyone she met. Monique Ball was also a devoted mother to two little girls, aged one and three. Monique's daily job was to help people find their ideal homes, which she did with much love and dedication. Her friends admired how hard she worked at her job every day. Even when she wasn't working, Monique's warm and positive personality shone through, making a lasting impression on those lucky to meet her. Monique had a lot of energy that never ran out, and her dedication to her job showed how special she was. What set her apart was her amazing ability to connect with people in a way that went beyond her job as a real estate agent. She became a source of comfort and trust for people starting their journey to find their dream homes. Monique had a lasting effect on the lives she touched because she was always willing to help and show compassion. Monique's boyfriend was John Mitchell Momo, also known as Momo, a rapper with a complicated and troubled past. It is reported that individuals who had a problem with Momo turned their attention to Monique because they thought he had done them wrong somehow. Their need for revenge took them down a dangerous path. Their plan was disturbingly well thought out. They made a plan to catch Monique, not because they had a grudge against her, but because they thought she knew where to find Momo. Even though they didn't know Monique personally, they saw her as a possible link to their target and used a twisted plan to reach their evil goals. Monique's story got tangled up with the problems her boyfriend was having. The bad guys didn't care about her safety, their only goal was to get to Momo. On New Year's Eve of 2019, a terrible and evil crime happened that changed the lives of those involved for good. 28-year-old Monique Ball was kidnapped and brutally murdered. Monique's kidnapping was part of a twisted plan by a group of people, including Cedric Barry, Barry Davis, Elsa Segura, and Lyndon Wiggins. The crime was in relation to Monique's boyfriend, John Mitchell Momo, also known as Momo, who had a troubled past and had fought with these crooks before. The attackers thought that Monique could lead them to Momo, and their desire for payback led them to devise a horrifying plan. A woman by the name of Elsa Seguras, who was a probation officer, contacted Monique. Her role in the crime was important, even though she didn't physically participate in the murder. She pretended to be a client to get Monique to go to a fake house showing in Maple Grove, where she was kidnapped. During the attack, the target was Monique's boyfriend, who was in their shared home with their children then. 
After kidnapping Monique, they took her keys and returned to the home and attempted to murder Momo. They shot him several times and thinking he was dead, they left the home not realizing he survived the attack. Monique's body was discovered after technology that detects gunshot led police to an alley where they discovered Monique's body in the back of the U-Haul truck bound and shot to death. During the investigation, the police tracked down who rented the U-Haul truck and who Monique was showing the house to, as well as speaking to the boyfriend that survived, and they were able to make several arrests. As a result of the Cedric Barry, Barry Davis, and Elsa Segura were arrested and all found guilty of their part in Monique's kidnapping and death. Because of what they did, they were sentenced to life in jail without the chance of parole. 2019, I said goodnight and I love you to my daughter Monique Bell for the last time. In a tense and emotional courtroom, Wanda Williams Bow talked about how much her daughter loved being a mother to her two girls. They have to take my word for it because she's not here to tell them herself and I know she would tell them every single day. And both of her girls, they say goodnight to her too. And they kiss and hug her picture. Williams Bow asked Judge Peter Cahill to give Cedric Barry and Barry Davis life without parole, which he did. Before the sentencing, both defendants maintained their innocence. And my condolences to the Ball family. I hate you guys had to go through this, and I will always pray that the truth comes out. Thank you. Miss uh, Ball, I hope she I hope she gets relief. Today she didn't get it because justice wasn't served. After court, Williams Bow called the comments ridiculous and self-serving. She thanked prosecutors and Minneapolis police for putting her daughter's killers behind bars. They'll spend the rest of their lives in jail and um, they won't have an opportunity to do this to anyone else's mother, loved one ever again. A Hennepin County judge sentenced a former probation officer to life in prison without the possibility of parole. A jury convicted her in the kidnapping and murder of realtor Monique Bow. Two men, Cedric Berry and Barry Davis, are also serving life in prison in this case. Elsa Segura set up the fake home showing in Maple Grove that led to Bow's kidnapping and death. Judge Peter Cahill today agreed that Segura was just as responsible as the men who killed her. Here's Esme Murphy. Elsa Segura made the phone call that lured Monique Bow, a mother of two, to the phony showing. A jury found that made her guilty of first-degree murder and kidnapping. Bao's mother agrees. Your Honor, the defendant, she actually could have been a hero. She could have been a hero. She could have warned Monique. Prosecutors played a family video featuring pictures of Monique throughout her life. Wanda Williams Bao says Monique's six-year-old recently told her this. Legend said to me a couple weeks ago, she said, she said she wants to die. And I said, no, baby, why would you say that? And she said, because I want to see my mommy. Throughout the proceedings, Segura showed no emotion. As a teen, she survived the 35W bridge collapse. Monique's mother said she did not deserve another chance. I am asking that she get life without the possibility of parole. No more chances. Judge Peter Cahill agreed, sentencing her to the same life without parole sentence as Cedric Berry and Barry Davis. Lyndon Wiggins, the fourth suspect, was also found guilty about the crime. He was found guilty of aiding and abetting premeditated first-degree murder, attempted premeditated first-degree murder, kidnapping, and first-degree murder while kidnapped. Lyndon Wiggins received a life sentence with no chance of parole due to his participation in the abduction and murder. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office also named a fifth suspect, Shantae Davis. She was charged with helping a criminal, which make her a participant in the crime. Judge Peter Cale sentenced 41-year-old Shantae Cherise Davis to 90 days in Hennepin County Jail, beginning on February 2, 2023. Additionally, Cale postponed an 18-month prison term and instead ordered two years of probation. With this latest decision by the court, the people who hurt Monique Ball will stay in jail for what they did. The court carefully looked over Cedric Berry's and Barry Davis's appeals, but in the end, they upheld their sentences. The story of Monique Ball is very sad and shouldn't have happened. With a bright future ahead of her, her life was cut short by a horrible crime that saddened the whole town. Everyone in the neighborhood is very sad about what happened, and it's made us think about how we could stop it from happening again and how much it will hurt her family. 
Monique was taken and killed, a heartbreaking fact that shows how important personal safety is, especially for people whose jobs require interacting with strangers. If there had been better safety rules for showing houses, there might have been signs that she was in danger. Also, it's important to inform people of the risks of certain jobs, like real estate, and give them tips on staying safe. Monique's unexpected death has a wide range of effects. Her family and friends are dealing with overwhelming loss and sadness. They must figure out how to live without her, missing out on happy times they should have shared. Her two young girls deeply feel this loss because they no longer have their mother's care and guidance. This heartbreaking fact will stay with them for the rest of their lives. After this terrible thing happened, Monique's story makes us want to fight for safer communities, more awareness of possible dangers, and give people the information and tools they need to protect themselves. To remember Monique, let's work to ensure that similar sadness doesn't happen and that her legacy is a sign of positive change. The deep pain and sadness that Monique's family and friends have felt is a powerful warning that crimes like this hurt more than just the immediate victim. The long-term pain and chaos changed their lives in big ways. Helping, being there for, and listening to them are all important ways to make their lives easier. Thinking about what Monique went through and the problems she faced makes us want to work together to fix these problems. By working together, we can ensure history doesn't repeat itself and that our communities are strong enough to handle such horrors. Thanks for watching. See you next time.